My name is Davin Sturdivant, and in this AIM Learn Fast video, we'll be doing a detailed look at the Delta function in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. Okay, so Roger, I know that there are some specific functions that let me measure uh, like the changes in speed between corners and a couple other uh, things like that. Can we just dig a little bit more into that? Oh. Yeah, we, we, with with Race Studio Analysis and any any program like this, right, you, you, you're you looking at your data and you, you need to do things with it. And one of those things that uh, we want to make sure you have a tool that you can use is, is to measure things, right? It's it's not just squiggly lines. It's not just visual. It's not just reports. But we want you to be able to, to take a look at something and say, okay, well, this is how much miles per hour I gained on that straight away and, and compare that against your qualifying or, you know, before that carburetor change or, you know, tire pressure change or whatever it happened to be. So let's take a look at uh, – Let's take a look at a test. So we're going to open up Mark heat, Mark's heat race here, and uh, it always opens up to the best lap. And um, and I just happen to have a speed trace open here. So if you if you look at this these data this data trace, you know here, here's the back straightaway, right? So so you're you're getting onto the straightaway here at at, at about 33.4 miles per hour. And at the end of the straightaway on this particular run, we doing 49 and a half. Okay, so so if you, you might be way better at math than I am, but I, I I can't do the math in my head, right? How many miles per hour did I gain? It's uh, uh, it gets ugly quickly if I try to do too much of that. So uh, we have a tool that we can measure the, the difference between that, and we and we can compare it to other laps and 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 other things. So and it's just speed we're looking at. Another great application for this is how much RPM drops on a shifter between third and fourth gear, right? You, we can actually measure these things. Let's show you how it works. You know, we'll we'll do a couple different applications of it. Uh, it the major tool we call that the the delta tool, and it's this little red triangle up here in the upper right hand corner in the secondary icon toolbar. We, it's it, the, the the tag calls it the delta on off button, and we're going to click on that. And uh, I've clicked on it now. Nothing has happened so far, right? So it's a little bit confusing at first. But what it really is doing is it's waiting for two things. It's waiting for uh, an anchor point or the very first the measure from point, and then it's waiting for a second click, which is okay measure between these two points. The second one is movable. I'll show you that in a second. The first one, the next click I do, it's going to anchor. It's it's going to it's going to anchor into that spot, and I'm going to just come down here to the base of the lowest spot in the apex of this corner, and I'm just going to click right there. Now I can't click again if I want to. If I missed it and I didn't click in the right spot, I'd have to turn off the the function and turn it back on. But I have just anchored it there. If I, my next click, I'm going to just click in the middle of the straightaway, is movable. So if I could click there, I could click here. You can see that it's drawing two black lines, the anchor line, mm. and then it's drawing this major line. And I'm going to take that measure line, and I'm just dra holding my left mouse and dragging back and forth. I'm going to put it right to the top of that acceleration point, right at the end of the straightaway. So now I've got these two black lines right here and here. And then there's a, a line where I clicked here up to there. And th there's that, that delta line in between them. And that line is, is showing us the amount of miles per hour gain. Mm. The way that you read it, the way that it tells you what it is, is you have your normal channel tags over here, and that jumps to the left and the right, depending on where you have your cursor. Right now it's up in the upper left-hand corner. What it, It's now giving us two values. I'll show you in a minute where it just shows us the one. But the, the first value in that line on this channel tag, 49.6 in this particular case, that is the second click. That's the miles per hour we're going at the end of the straightaway, the second click that I clicked. The next value, 16.1, that is doing the math. Hmm. So that takes my my 33 whatever 33 and a half miles per hour and the difference up to this this 49.5 miles per hour 40 49.6 so the difference between where that where this black line crosses the speed trace to where the black line crosses the speed trace here there was a 16.1 mile per hour gain of speed in between these two black lines mm -hmm. 
that's what the delta function does for you. I could come back here to the to the middle or so, and, and now it's only 8.1 because it's only measuring from there to there. So that second point, I can move it anywhere I want in case I miss the point. Mm -hmm. So the the delta function, a, a, a powerful tool, you can just come up here and click on that, and it gives you the, the difference between those two values. Now, what I get a lot asked from some people that want to get a little bit deeper What's the slope of that line? So if I accelerated with one motor on the cart and, and it accelerates at such and such rate, and then I can compare to another one, I, that slope of that line, kind of the average acceleration between those two points, I guess, is a, is a, is a way of saying it as well. Mm -hmm. We have another function that is not turned on by default, but I'm going to show you how to turn on so we get the slope of this line, mm -hmm. and that'll be a third value up here in our channel tag. And the way that you do that is by clicking on the Options button and Settings. And here it brings up the Set Measure Plot dialog box here. And what you do is show rate of the delta, show rate with delta. So it's going to show me the rate of that line, the, the slope of that line. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that box on. And I'm going to apply and exit. And now you see, not only do I have that second click of 49.6 right there where I clicked, mm. I've got my miles per hour gained over this distance, which was 16.1. And then you've got this 2.2, which is in, in parentheses. What that 2.2, if you really want to do the math about it, it is basically the amount of miles per hour gained, 16.1, over the time between these two lines. Mm. And the time between those two lines is up here, and it's kind of hidden, so a lot of people don't see it. But where your cursor, you're normally you just have the time and the distance of wherever you've put the cursor. But when you go into the delta mode, you also have, in parentheses, the time between your two black lines that I've clicked on. Mm -hmm. So it's 7.485 seconds in between that line mm -hmm. and that line. Mm -hmm. And it's 456.419 feet between there and there. Mm -hmm. So what this 2.2 is on your delta function is... 16.1 miles per hour miles per hour gained mm -hmm. divided by 7.485 seconds. So in other words, the slope of that line is it, it was gaining 2.2 miles per hour per second mm. on average for that entire straightaway. Mm -hmm. 2.2 miles per second. Mm -hmm. Miles per hour. Yeah, miles per second. And uh, so 7.48 miles, you know, seconds is is the amount of time that we have between those two. So that is a valuable tool. So if you want to see just let me turn that off and let me click it one more time. I'm going to click it back on now and reset it. Now, let's say that I don't want to do it from the the, um, the actual apex, but let's get up here where the cart is fully straight and it's starting to accelerate pretty well. So I'm going to click from there up to about there. You can see now that it's gaining 3.0 miles per hour per second. Mm -hmm. So you, Because that's where it was really accelerating well. Mm -hmm. And if we go all the way up here where you're starting to get into arrow things and gearing advantages and, th and things are going away, you can kind of see where it starts to nose over here. Mm -hmm. And then the average is 2.5 miles per hour per second. So that uh, people have asked quite a bit, what about the slope of that line? Well, we do have that option if you go into the you know, uh, options and then settings and you can check that. So you know, one thing that you might want to we might want to talk about when we're looking at that line is maybe the like practical use of that, um, and maybe one of them might be um, like from a driving perspective. If I've changed some uh, way I've come off the corner, and maybe I'm accelerating more quickly off that corner because the cart's not so bound up or something else like that. Um, exactly. Let's let's take um, let's open up another driver's test. So let's let's compare two of them mm -hmm. so we can see those two dif two distinct differences. So I'm going to open the t database, and we're going to open David, David's heat race. And let's look at the best laps from both of them. Now you can see that there are two different acceleration curves here, right? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. speed traces. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually measure that real quickly. And see, you can see that the red one actually comes off the corner a little bit slower, mm -hmm. right? But the acceleration rate, certainly visually, is, is faster, right? It's accelerating at a higher rate. Right. Gets to about the same miles per hour, but boy, it got there quicker and then nosed over here where the gear ran out of gear or whatever it happened to be. Yeah. Let's click on the on the uh, delta function and let's anchor it down here where right here where both of them are on the throttle. Mm -hmm. And then come up here to the top. Let's just come back a little ways so we so we see the actual acceleration rate. We can actually even pull that back where, wherever we want to stop and take a look at it. In this case, 
the red one, which is David, he accelerated it at a rate of 3.3 miles per hour per second. Mm -hmm. And the blue one, which was Mark's best lap, he was accelerating on this straightaway at 2.8 miles per hour per second. The, th the bigger is better for acceleration, right? right. So the, in this particular case, it's pretty clear that uh, the red one is accelerating at a, at a, at a better rate, right? right? Yep. So, so that, uh, that, that's one way. And let's say you ch if you're only able to compare against yourself and you change gearing or you change the carburetor, change the motor, mm -hmm. and you, that feels like it's faster, well, you, know, you, can, uh, you can do some measuring here and actually come up with some real numbers. Definitely. One of the last thing that I want to make sure everybody understands is, is no matter what channel I have open, the, the delta function works across all different values we're looking at on the screen. So in this area here, you can see the red cart was substantially quicker from here to up to here, right? Mm -hmm. Ran through that area. And if we look at it, let's take the worst case scenario, maybe right here. It was, uh, you know, 2.3 miles per hour faster at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, the delta function not only works to tell us how much miles per hour was gained in that area, but also based on looking at the time compare bar, we can see exactly how much lap time that equaled uh, on the stopwatch. Mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and I'm going to I'm going to put the cur I'm going to anchor my delta function right here where they separate, and I'm going to go right here to where both of them hit the brakes, and I want to know you can see the delta the blue lap is losing time. Mm -hmm. How much time did that that little mess up of the blue one or the super quick of the red one, whichever way you want to look at it, but the difference, how much time did that make for the red card on the track? So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click on the delta function. I'm going to click right here where they separate. And I'm going to come right up here to where they both hit the brakes, right there, right? So, yes, we can see the, the mile per hour gained on the red one was 8.9 versus 7.8 on the, on the blue one. But what I want to really study is the difference between here and here and how much time did the blue lap blue driver actually lose on this lap in that section and if you look here it's the second value just like the second value up here mm -hmm. it's the second right. value so that little error or the, the red one being that much quicker through that section was worth almost two tenths of a second mm. simply on that one little area that was worth two tenths of a second of the eight tenths or so or about the second worth of, of lap different time difference Makes between sense. those two so just want everybody to know that the, the delta function measures not only a, a major value that's inside of the data like this, but also down in the time compare bar. So you, when you see a difference, you can say, okay, well, that actually cost, or I made, or that cost me two-tenths of a second by that. I really got to clean up that area since we're looking for the biggest changes in the time compare bar when we do our data analysis. So time compare bar, I'm, I'm sorry, the delta function, a very, very powerful tool. So, that's the end of this AIM Learn Fast video. Please feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments below or get a hold of us on social media. We're using the best questions to come out with new videos, which we're trying to release every Tuesday. Visit aimsports.com if you'd like to review other Micron products.